Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg. Flask 2.0 was released just a few days ago, so I thought I would give you a review. Uh, this is going to be opinionated. I'm not going to talk about every every change that went into the release, but um, uh, instead I'm going to concentrate on a few areas that I find exciting, uh, that I think you should know, and, and that uh, are important for, uh, for the future of Flask. Uh, so, it's going to be three main areas. So the first one is uh, about routing. So let's take a look at a quick example here. Uh, so, so this is nothing new. Uh, you've seen this a thousand times. Uh, so the app.route decorator uh, remains the same. Uh, you can use it exactly as before. Uh, but now there are some alternatives to it uh, that are a little bit uh, you know, simpler. Uh, at, at least you have to type less characters. Uh, so, if you are handling uh, any request uh, requests that use methods other than get, you uh, you know that you have to add the uh, the methods uh, optional argument here and add here, for example, let's say post something like this. Uh, so, so this still works but now there is a simplified method to do this you can now say up the post and this will be a handler for a post request uh, you can obviously do up the get for get and then there is put and patch and delete so all these are uh, shortcuts for for the app dot route decorator with a methods uh, argument uh, added to it um, if you're developing an API, uh, at, at least the way I develop my APIs, I typically map a single request method per view function. So this is actually interesting. It saves uh, a, a few characters, and and it's not annoying, uh, you know, to have to add that optional argument, the methods argument. Uh, for those of you who develop traditional server-centric applications uh, with web forms, you know, all of that. Um, uh, a very common pattern is to handle get and post requests in the same view function, uh, right? So, uh, so f in those cases, what you can do is you can do it like this, which the argument of saving characters doesn't really apply anymore. But you know, uh, I mean, you, you you may like this better than having a single decorator with the methods, uh, the methods argument at the end. You know, uh, up to you. Both do the same thing. Uh, so okay. So this is the uh, the first subtopic uh, in terms of routing. the The next thing that I want to mention and last uh, with regards to routing is uh, another new thing uh, in terms of blueprints that has been added, and uh, it's the ability to. Uh, to nest blueprints. So uh, I, I don't have an example for this, but uh, the, the docs have a really good one. Um, so basically, you know, when you create a blueprint, you register it with the application, and then all the, the contents of the blueprint are installed in the app. Uh, so now it is also possible to register a blueprint uh, on a parent blueprint. And then when that the, the bigger blueprint gets registered with the app, all the contents uh, fr from itself and from the, the child blueprint are, uh, you know, going to the application. So, uh, so that's basically the idea. I personally don't think I'll ever need to do this, but this is a feature that has been requested for years. Uh, so I assume there, there's a lot of people, or at least some people, who will find this useful. Uh, so here you can see the example where you have a parent blueprint a second blueprint that's the child and then you call register blueprint uh, on the parent and register the child and then the parent is registered with the app uh, so anyway uh, you may find it useful um, so uh, so these are the two uh, important things uh, that that I believe uh, you know apply to to the, the routing category uh, out of the three that I'm going to uh, to talk about in this review. Okay, let's move on to the second topic. Uh, the second topic is WebSocket. So, 
you may be wondering uh, what so flask now supports websocket and the answer is no it's not really that uh, so the uh, the change here uh, which to me is super exciting is that the uh, there are internal changes in the flask development web server that allow it to route websocket requests so so this is not direct support for websocket in flask but this opens the door for extensions to support websocket using the flask development web server something that it was impossible before uh, if, if if you ever tried one of the extensions uh, that do websocket uh, with flask uh, you know that you have to change your web server uh, typically you have to move to gevent or eventlet those are the two uh, web servers which are asynchronous uh, that support WebSocket, uh, you know, along with a, a Whiskey application such as one with Flask. Um, so, with this release, with Flask 2.0, uh, you can run a WebSocket using the Flask development web server. Uh, so, uh, to to show you this and uh, hopefully get you as excited as I am with this, uh, I'm going to run an example for uh, for for uh, actually two examples but the first one uh, the first one is with my flask socket IO extension which is one of the available choices to do web socket with uh, with flask uh, so I think I have uh, let's see flask socket IO examples I, I have the the repository uh, for flask socket IO which has an example here so I'm going to run uh, the the basic example. So you can see here uh, the the uh, as soon as the application runs, it detects uh, that WebSocket is not available, and it tells you that you need to install this this thing, this new thing called Simple WebSocket. It's it's a new package for uh, for Python. Uh, so if I use it like this, I go to uh, localhost. 5000 this uh, this works but you can see that uh, it's using long polling which is the the slower method of using socket IO uh, so this uh, make sure that this works and it does so I, I I'm connected but but this is uh, inefficient so uh, and we, we can note the uh, the latency is 4.4-ish uh, milliseconds. So I'm going to uh, to stop this and follow the instructions and install simple WebSocket and then run it again. So you can see right now WebSocket now is uh, it's the transport and I think I need to refresh this this is because of the time it, it was stopped now the latency is uh, is off so so there you go so to one one point ish milliseconds now so so this is faster you see that uh, here there are no constant requests flying by because now uh, this is a WebSocket connection uh, so, so this is one of the ways where uh, things are a little better. Uh, uh, as a side note, this is also supported with GUnicorn. So, if if you wanted to deploy this application for uh, for production, uh, you don't have to use uh, Gevent or Eventlet um, anymore. I mean, th th those continue to work, but uh, but you can also use GUnicorn in multi-threaded mode. Uh, th this also uh, applies to uh, to GUnicorn. So, so very exciting development here uh, because uh, a lot of people find that their applications are incompatible with, uh, with Gevent or Eventlet. Uh, the uh, the second thing that I'm going to show you is this other extension that's called flask sock which is also mine it's very new um, unfortunately the uh, the good names for websocket extensions for flask are all taken so you know <laughs> the name is a little bit boring I'm gonna make sure that I have this installed uh, and 
this one also has examples so uh, this one I can run in the standard way with flask run and I connect and this is a uh, a more traditional WebSocket so this doesn't have socket IO it's just a WebSocket and basically any anything you type it, it sends you back uh, uh, and if you want to see the example this is actually super simple uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the main route renders this page and then the, the WebSocket basically is a, uh, it's an endless loop that waits to receive anything which is what, what I type here and it sends it back uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the caller so uh, so there you go this is another option now uh, to do WebSocket um, if you were using uh, the other main WebSocket extension flask sockets uh, uh, that, that one also required uh, G event so now you can use this one it uh, works pretty much in the same way and you, you can use it uh, with uh, with the Flask development web server with GUnicorn in multi-threaded mode. Uh, we, you, you can also use it with GEvent. You can, you can also use it with Eventlet. So a lot of options all from this uh, new extension. The final topic is async. So you, uh, you've probably seen in the, uh, the change log for Flask that now there is async support so uh, let's take a look at that uh, so here you have uh, a, an example of that uh, basically now you can you can put an async function as a view function uh, and then inside that function you can use await you can call any other async uh, functions coroutines you know all of that um, so um, this is exciting uh, but not very exciting uh, Unfortunately, the uh, the support for async in Flask 2.0 is very shy. It, it's it's a uh, it's a commendable first uh, first approach, first attempt, uh, but um, it's not really going to give you the things that you expect from an async server. Uh, so um, typically, uh, you use async for one of two reasons. Uh, one reason is that you like to write in async, uh, right? So, so th there's nothing to be said about that. Some people like it, so uh, those people probably use uh, maybe Fast API or Quart, um, you know, one, one of those new, uh, newish uh, async frameworks for Python. Uh, the second reason, wh which I think is more common, is that you use async because it gives you, or because it is, it is the only method that gives you uh, the scalability, uh, you know, that meets the, the scalability demands of your application. Um, so, given an application, if you deploy it uh, with multi processes or with multi threaded servers, uh, eventually you, you will find that you reach a limit. Uh, you know, above which the application cannot scale, right? You, you need to, uh, to buy more hardware to scale at that point. So the same application coded in async, uh, you know, will have a much uh, higher limit. So, so you will be able to do more with the same hardware. Um, when I say more, that means uh, in general, you mean uh, more clients, uh, you know, concurrent clients or clients per second or requests per second, you know, uh, you will be able to do more because async uh, allows you to uh, to utilize the CPU resource much more efficiently. So, um, so this is a good reason to use async. Unfortunately, uh, in the way that Flask implemented async support, you do not get the benefit of scalability uh, because async runs sort of in a in a bubble that is subordinate to the whiskey. Uh, to the whiskey threads or processes, uh, so so uh, so basically uh, the async code is still bound to threads or processes, whichever your server uses for concurrency. So it's not great, but it, but, but it's a good start. Uh, so uh, let me uh, let me show you an example of what I mean 
uh, when I say that you don't get scalability benefits. So let's let's run this. Um, so since uh, I'm going to measure performance here, I'm not going to use the Flask development web server. Uh, really, when, when you measure performance, you 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 want to use a, a real web server, a production web server. So um, let's use G Unicorn here, um, our, our our good friend, uh, which I don't seem to have installed here. Okay, so uh, let's see. So I'm going to use uh, AB uh, Apache Bench, uh, which is a benchmarking uh, tool um, to to measure how how this web server does in terms of uh, requests per second. Uh, I recall that the only uh, the only route that I have uh, runs for a quarter of a second. Right. So uh, so basically, what I'm going to do here. I'm going to send 10 requests uh, spread from five different clients. So each client will, will send two uh, to, to this, uh, to this uh, main route and see how things work. So you can see requests per second. It's almost four, which is the expected, right? Because the, uh, the request runs for a quarter of a second. You, you, uh, you know, we, we have a single worker. So, so we have, you know, close to four requests per second. Uh, so what happens if, if, we, uh, if we double this? So let's, let's do 20 requests from 10 different clients. And you see, it's the same, right? So, so this server is not going to get any faster uh, as more uh, more clients join or, or more requests are sent. Uh, you cannot do any better than the four requests per second on a single worker, right? So if I wanted to um, to support more, then I could run G Unicorn with with two workers, and then I could do eight requests per second. Uh, I can do four workers, and it will be sixteen requests per second. But still, this is going to be not very great, right? Because uh, during that quarter of a second that a request runs for, that worker, the worker that is handling that request, cannot do anything else, even though it's it's asleep really. So uh, the CPU isn't doing anything, but it, but it's still taken, uh, you know, by by the request. It cannot go do some other work. So this is the problem. Uh, if you had an async web server, this would not be a problem. It is a problem in Flask still. Uh, even though you're using an async function because of this uh, weird way in which async is currently supported. But uh, the, the, the good thing about this is that Flask now knows about async. And uh, with everything in Flask, it's, uh, you know, what you like, you, you can use directly. What you don't like, you can override and, uh, you know, change. Right, uh, th this is what we do with Flask. Right? Flask is it's very flexible to uh, to different views and different uh, different packages, different technologies, all of that. So uh, I I did something here. Um, so I have this thing called AIO Flask. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, so AIO Flask is uh, it's a package that I created. And it uses a, a pretty clever technique to uh, to allow sync functions and async functions to uh, to coexist, which is typically difficult. Uh, so if if you're following the development of SQL Alchemy in the in the recent release in release 1.4, SQL Alchemy started uh, supporting uh, async I/O, and the way they did it is with, with, the, with the clever technique. I, actually, I learned it from them, uh, actually. Uh, this is a technique that combines uh, the, uh, the async I.O. coroutines with greenlets and uh, allows some, some really, really fascinating ways in which a sync function can call an async function and vice versa. So, uh, so what I did is I, I learned 
this technique from from uh, Mike Bayer, the uh, the creator of SQL Alchemy, and I, I sort of implemented the same idea for Flask, and I overrode the, uh, the this little part of Flask where uh, where it handles the async function. I changed it to to handle it my way. Uh, so, so now uh, what we get with AIO Flask is a, a true async environment. So um, let's change this. So now I'm going to use AIO Flask. Uh, nothing else changes here. And uh, for this, uh, so, so now the AIO Flask uses an async web server. So this is not WSGI anymore. We're not constrained by by WSGI. So this is ASGI. So for uh, for running this, I'm going to use UVCorn, uh, which is the the standard uh, you know ASCII uh, web server. So I'm going to run it under UVCorn. So it's the same application. So now uh, let's try. 10 connections, and we get, whoa, 13. So 10 connections, and we, we get 13 requests per second. So, so you can see that now uh, that there's an overlap. So, so uh, when one of the request uh, handlers, the, the view function, is sleeping, then uh, the server is free to take another request on that same uh, you know, uh, you know, on 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 the same CPU using that same CPU. This is one worker as well, by the way. So this is this is also one CPU for everything. So um, let's uh, let's double this. So let's do twenty. So t now it's twenty-five. So so uh, what this means is that. We haven't reached the limit, right? On the on the other one, we we reached four requests per second, or almost four, and it, it wasn't going any any higher than that when we increased the load. So this is still doing good. So that means that we can try another another increase. So let's do forty twenty, and now we get fifty requests per second. So let's do. 40 clients and 80 uh, 80 requests and <laughs> 98 uh, so you see this is this is super exciting uh, at least to me so let's do 80 clients and 160 connections uh, 190 uh, so you see um, this this is this is mind blowing right so so now we really get the true async behavior the thing that uh, you know the typical thing that you get from fast api or uh, or quart or sanic you know all, all, all those newer frameworks you get it with with flask uh, so we, we can do one more i think i'm going to stop oops i at this point uh yeah th this continues to uh, uh 343 what was the previous one uh, 190 right so so you see uh, we, we, we can keep going and eventually we'll, we will reach a limit it's going it's going to be in the hundreds maybe even in the thousands at this point I don't care this this is great uh, you know I'm super happy that I can do this uh, but I should say that this is experimental uh, AIO flask uh, changes just a few things so so mostly you you are running true flask uh, it changes a few things here and there to, to allow for this. Uh, I will continue to develop it. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I believe the, um, the last thing, the, the one thing that I don't have working yet is the, uh, the test client. The test client still does not work, uh, but, uh, but you, can use, uh, you can use request handlers, so, so view functions. Uh, before request, after request, you know, all, all those can be async and run in, in this optimized mode. Uh, you can have CLI commands that are async. Render template, you know, the Jinja stuff is async. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is very exciting. Uh, I do it because I, I have an interest in this. I'm not sure if this will ever make it into, into the official Flask uh, release or not. Uh, 
but uh, but anyway, it, it's a possibility, and I'm very excited about all, all the new doors that are opened by by Flask 2.0 uh, with this and the other two topics that I mentioned before. So anyway, I hope this was useful. Uh, ended up being a little bit longer than I expected, but uh, I hope you found this review uh, useful and uh, happy Flask 2.0 release. Bye-bye.